Birds have fascinated humans for millennia, likely as a result of their impressive plumage, high activity levels, and, in most cases, diurnal habits. While I'm not the biggest bird nerd out there, I too have become increasingly fascinated with avian life over the past few years. And when the herping is slow, I'll occasionally film whatever feathered friends happen to be near me at the time. This past summer, I had the opportunity to observe and film some pretty remarkable species on a trip to the lowland swamps and coastal marshes of South Carolina. One of the first species that I spotted on this adventure was a relatively uncommon find for me, a snowy egret. While these can definitely be found back home in North Carolina, they are heavily associated with coastal marshes and mudflats, areas which can be difficult to access in film. In the brackish water environments where these birds thrive, they can often be seen using their bright yellow feet to sift through the substrate and stir up prey items in a method similar to the way that wood storks use their beaks. This prey can include anything from crustaceans to fish to amphibians, and all mules are spotted using extremely sharp eyesight before being quickly snapped up by the sharp and elongated beak. Not nearly as large as some of the other wading birds found in the southeast, snowy egrets tend to go after smaller game than the likes of great blue herons, or their larger cousins, the great egret. Standing over three feet tall and boasting a nearly six foot wingspan, great egrets are nearly twice as large as their snowy cousins. This male has a bright green patch of plumage in the front of his eye, a bit of razzle-dazzle intended to wow any potential mates in the area. Great egrets prefer a more laid-back feeding style than snowies, gracefully striding through shallow water and using their eyesight and a dagger-like beak to locate and capture a variety of prey items. Unlike his smaller and more generalistic cousin, he's a picky eater and greatly prefers fish to other food sources. He's also capable of taking down prey as large as rodents or even smaller birds. This time, a fish will do. Both of these egrets are ecologically significant predators that provide population checks for numerous prey species, but also an energy source for top dogs like alligators. Fortunately, they can be found in abundance in the present day, but populations were actually suffering in the late 1800s due to plumage hunting for the fashion industry. I'm glad that we eventually decided feathers look better on birds than humans. Still another waiting predator is this beautiful tricolored heron. Named for the combination of blues, reds, and whites that define the plumage of adults, these are some really unique looking birds. A highly coastally associated species, tricolors spend most of their time in saltwater marshes, mangrove areas, and lagoons, but will occasionally utilize freshwater ponds and canals. These are slightly smaller and more trim than their famous great blue cousins, but still make excellent use of their elongated bill and sharp vision to hunt pretty much everything that moves. Unlike the egrets that we've looked at so far, tricolors often pursue very active feeding methods, using their long legs to run or even jump after prey, rather than for elegant maneuvering. For this individual, the strategy seems to be working. But wading is not the only way to make a living as a predatory bird in these parts. Some species, such as the osprey, prefer an aerial approach to finding food. A strong pair of wings and a few years of experience in the air allow this adult osprey to soar above the water while expending very little energy, and still provide the flexibility needed for fast changes in direction. Incredibly powerful, Polarized vision gives these avians the ability to spot prey from up to 100 feet in the air. Once a fish is spotted, they will tuck their wings and dive at up to 50 miles an hour, plunging into the water feet first atop their potential meal. Their toes come equipped with both a barbed skin covering and four wickedly sharp hook-shaped talons, which work along with their powerful leg muscles to get a solid hold on even the slipperiest of fish. Not every dive ends in a successful catch, but persistence pays off. When a fish is captured, it's usually transported to a favored perch for safe enjoyment away from pests that might try and steal the free meal. The eyes and head are the real prize of any catch, and are often the first parts of the meal to be consumed. Like many birds of prey, 
Osprey were negatively impacted by DDT pesticide contamination in aquatic ecosystems during the mid 20th century, with populations declining by as much as 90% as a result of these compounds. Thankfully, DDT was banned in 1972. In that decision, combined with the construction of artificial nest sites, brought populations back to stable levels in most areas by the early 2000s. Now, these apex predators can be relatively easily spotted near bodies of water throughout the southeast, where they keep fish populations in check and help ensure that no one species takes up too many of the ecosystem's resources. Alright everyone, that's just about it for today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed and learned something new about the avian life of South Carolina. If you did enjoy, please feel free to leave a like on this video and consider subscribing to my channel for new educational wildlife content coming on Saturday mornings as often as possible. Also, if you haven't already, be sure to check out my Twitter and Instagram pages at The Wild Report for photos and video clips from my adventures. Thanks so much for watching and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Benzino of The Wild Report, signing out.